Well, Don Lemon has been fired again. This time, it wasn't for bad-mouthing Nikki Haley, that's understandable, and it wasn't for disrespecting Caitlin Collins, again, understandable. No, this time he got fired from his show in partnership with X before the first episode even aired. Today, we're talking about two examples of unimpressive elites, and what better example to start with than this guy. The debut episode of Lemon's show was going to be an interview with the owner of X, Elon Musk. They taped the hour-and-a-half-long interview, but then... Hours later, Lemon says he received a short text from Musk that read contract is canceled. Which actually shows some restraint. I don't want to know what I would do after talking to Don Lemon for an hour and a half. But since then, it's been a lot of he said, she said. Lemon says that Elon was just intimidated by him. But apparently, free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. Elon says that Lemon was doing a bad job. Quote, his approach was basically just CNN but on social media, which doesn't work as evidenced by the fact that CNN is dying. So it sounds like Elon was making a business decision and Don Lemon is doing his caddy junior high drama thing. Hi everyone, Elon Musk is mad at me. But I don't want to poison the well here. You be the judge. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great replacement theory? As it relates I don't to have to answer these questions. The great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. He's looking down at his notes, speaking in long, rambling sentences. This guy was in national television for 17 years, and this is what he does on his own. Of course, it's a bad faith question, but it's also the most boring question he could have asked. Elon's been asked that in every interview he's done since he took over Twitter. How many trips to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro does this guy have to take? I don't know why Elon made the deal with Lemon in the first place. Not just because Lemon is obviously an enemy, but also because he's a dope. Of course, Elon has never had great taste in relationships. In the end, he made the right call, and Don Lemon is doing the drama thing because he doesn't have anything else to do. Elon doesn't have time for gossip when he's launching rockets into space. Plus, he's been sending some quality posts lately. Not sure which one I'm most excited about. Hate speech on the platform is up. Okay, probably that one. Don Lemon is what happens when the regime is done with you. He used to have real power, but only as the face of a company that was cozy with power, only as long as he was at CNN. Now he's casting about for relevance by Z-snapping at a billionaire. Contrast this with Tucker. He got fired from Fox the same day Lemon got fired from CNN. But Tucker is an impressive person. He doesn't need to be propped up the way Lemon did. And speaking of people being propped up, let's talk about someone the regime isn't done with quite yet. That's right, Joe Biden has locked up the Democratic nomination for president. And after sweeping Wednesday's primaries, Trump has locked up the Republican nomination. Here's hoping that's not the last thing he locks up, which means we're in for a rematch. So get out your face masks and burn down a target. We're doing 2020 again. Now we can look forward to a nearly eight month long general election battle that has in some ways already been underway for several weeks. And by several, they mean somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion, 300 million billion. Now Trump and Biden are in full campaign mode. Biden is, of course, making speeches. So now we have among the lowest inflation rates of any country in America. Also this week, the transcripts of his interview with special counsel Robert Hur were released. During his explanation about why there might have been classified documents in his garage, Biden veered off the topic and started discussing his prized Corvette, including making vroom vroom sounds. He also told a long tale of a man he represented early in his legal career who lost his penis in a fire. So things are going great. Like I said, the only difference between Biden and Don Lemon is that the regime still has a use for Biden. They keep him around because he won't get in their way. Meanwhile, over on the Trump side, one of his trials was postponed. Six counts in Fannie Willis's indictment against him have been quashed by the judge, though the judge did keep Fannie Willis on as long as she fires her boyfriend, which is bad. I'm going to go watch a Steve Turley video to cheer me up. I'm blackpilled. I, I'm blackpilled. We, we are living under a corrupt oligarchy over which we have no control. Oh. And I'm hearing there's more news. It's official. Donald Trump has solidified his takeover of the Republican National Committee. Now, let's not get too excited. This is MSNBC. They exaggerate everything Trump does. I've been burned before. Ronna Romney McDaniel, a Trump loyalist, has stepped down as chair after being pushed out by Trump. The man replacing her is North Carolina Republican Michael Watley, an election denier who still embraces the big lie. OK, I'm listening. Now, get this. The disgraced ex-president's daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, was officially named his co-chair. The new leadership, even more MAGA than the last, is already focused on raising money. No, no, anything but that. Don't they know the DNC is the one that's allowed to have money? He has made it clear that he will allocate resources for so-called 
election integrity. Side note, this guy is the platonic form of a catty black gay guy. No wonder Don Lemon can't compete. He then interviews an expert on the RNC, a member of the Lincoln Project. Chairman Steele? Yes. <laughs> um, what's up with this new with this new leadership? I call it the the complete decapitation of the Republican National Committee. All right, I'm in. Put Trump's name on the building, install the golden toilets, and queue up YMCA. Ding dong, the RNC is dead. Trump, Elon, Tucker, these people are impressive. They don't have power the way the left does, but they are true elites. On the other hand, Biden, Don Lemon, Kamala Harris, wherever she is, they're just masks that the regime wears. They're disposable, and they're not even good masks. Our elites have to be impressive because we don't have as much power. Since the left has all the power, they can afford to put up dummies like this. The left isn't uber competent, but they do understand politics. That's the advantage they have. They understand the friend-enemy distinction. They know how important patronage is. But even when we get a peek behind the curtain at the people actually running things, they're no more impressive. They're just doughy gay guys who will tell any secret they have, all for the chance to make out with James O'Keefe. They're not in power because they've made better arguments. They're not in power because they're more competent. They're in power because because they understand the game. Our right-wing elites are more impressive, but that doesn't automatically grant them power. That comes through confident action, like launching rockets, buying social media companies, and the complete decapitation of the Republican National Committee.